Hey, hello again. I'm out on the Middle Fork Snoqualmie River again near North Bend. Looking for a pretty scene to paint. Looking for a mountain with some snow on it. It's pretty bright. So I'm going to put my sunglasses on. I've got these kind of old, they're not very strong, amber sunglasses I can paint with on a sunny day to keep my eyes from being too blinded. Let me show you the scene I found here on the river. Beautiful green Snoqualmie River flowing toward us and some peaks there in the background with a little bit of snow left. It's almost May so the snow is normally just about gone at this elevation by now but we've had some late cold weather and some snow in the hills so the peaks still have a little bit of snow. And that's really why I came here again to try to capture this scene before the snow is all gone. I may exaggerate the snow up there a bit. I was hoping for a bit more, so I may play with that. I may also play with the, the clouds as they're rolling over the top of the hill up there. It's really gorgeous, obscuring part of the peak. I spotted this scene driving over the bridge to a trail. I was hiking, and I thought, wow, I could get down on that rocky bar and have a beautiful view up the river of the rocky peak. I could spend a couple hours here in the middle of the day with pretty consistent light and just watch what the weather does. It's supposed to get clearer so I should get a little more sun on the mountain up there which will be beautiful. And that's one of the excellent things about painting outdoors, painting in different locations is you get a feel for what the weather's going to do, what the light's going to do. You really absorb the colors and the feel the sounds and the smells, I think that gets into the painting a bit. I think when you do a good plein air or a good studio painting based on a plein air and on your reference photos, the feel of the place gets into the painting. At least that's my goal. I'm not looking for hyper realism. I'm not looking for photo realism. A great photographer could come here and, and take a much more detailed shot. What I'm looking for is my interpretation of the scene what I took away from it, what struck me as beautiful, and I want to emphasize those things. So what I'm hoping is that the sun is going to pick out some of these deciduous trees that have just that have just sprouted some new leaves. They have a beautiful green gold of spring. And I want to try to capture the grandeur of those snow-covered peaks up there. I want I want to really communicate the feeling of how tall and majestic they are and one way I can do that is to have them climbing right up into the clouds and also the careful drawing careful communication of the perspective everything should be tipped up and away from me so all my shapes should be kind of drawn in a way that communicates how everything is up and away I'm going to take a couple pictures on my iPhone, just play with composition, landscape, or portrait, and then I'll get set up. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Quick rundown on my palette. I've got Artist Turpentine in here, Liquin, Gamsol. After I do the turpentine wash, I'll put the lid on the turpentine and get out the Gamsol. Even outdoors, I don't like to breathe the fumes from that turpentine any longer than I have to. Ivory black, Rembrandt cold gray, titanium white, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, sap green, burnt umber, burnt sienna, lizard and crimson, cad red, cad yellow, yellow lemon, got a little bit, of, just a bit of gambling, radiant lemon, and yellow ochre. I'm not sure I'll need all of these, they're kind of my standard colors for painting outdoors here in the Pacific Northwest. So, so I'll start by mixing the colors according to the scene. Right now the, the scene is pretty muted because the sun's behind the clouds. If it jumps out and I see some really vibrant unique colors then I'll mix those as well. After I mix the colors then I'll use a small bristle brush and sketch the scene. I'm not really going to 
use the photo on my iPhone this time. It's a pretty straightforward scene. I'm going with a landscape orientation, so a horizontal orientation, an oil primed linen panel from Gorilla Painter 11 by 14. I like this oil primed linen. It's a fun surface to paint on. I've got the one third line sketched on there. I won't really use them this time. The one third lines on there will just kind of help me keep things like horizon lines close to these one third lines instead of dead center. I'll probably put this big clump of trees on the far river bank here and I'll put the, the peaks there and then just have the river kind of go in and out in a S curve. Nice standard composition. Looks like we have two or three giant birds of prey circling up there. I hope you can see them. Hawk or eagle? I'm not sure. Beautiful birds. I've been looking at Edgar Payne and the Comptons, father and son, mountain painter, Comptons. Beautiful paintings of the Alps, of the Matterhorn. In Compton's paintings, he seemed to really try to avoid a cutout feel. He didn't want a harsh, hard edge everywhere. He preserved a hard edge just where he wanted it and kept everything else pretty soft. Same thing with the colors. He didn't want a real harsh color. Everything was pretty muted except for where he wanted it. So I may bump up the color intensity of those peaks up there just a bit because that's where really I want the the interest to go that and back down to the edge of the river. Alright I've got some nice colors mixed up here. I've got some blue for the sky. It's pretty muted. Made with ultramarine blue, cerulean blue and white and just a touch of um, a lizard and crimson. I use those same colors plus a little bit of burnt sienna to make the clouds. This is the deepest shadow of the underside of the cloud. This is the different hues, a little warmer, a little cooler. Um, just the gray, grayed out cloud. This is a lighter, greener blue, some more cerulean blue, more white for the sky further down, closer to the mountain. Here's my mountain colors. Um, this is the deepest shadow. Now these are all made mainly with black, ivory black, yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, and alizarin crimson, and maybe just a touch of burnt umber. But mostly black and yellow ochre. And I've shifted things warmer and cooler, darkest, a little lighter, a little lighter. These are all really close to the same value, just subtle differences. And what I'll do is I'll carve into the turpentine wash to create that snow pattern on the mountain. Just try to do it with the sharp edge of a flat and create an in interesting serrated rock pattern. And I'll use the sky color and maybe a little white with cad yellow added to fill in the snow and then I'll paint the, the darks into that. These greens and darker reds are also for the mountain right in front of the furthest back mountain. So furthest mountain will be more in this value range and then the closer mountain will be in this value range and then in front of that will be these greens for the pine trees and for the deciduous trees and as things recede, I'll, I'll gray these deciduous tree colors out with some of the mountain colors. Shift things around warmer and cooler. I've got a little green here for the majority of the pine trees and also for the majority of the river. I'll just use the sky colors that I mixed for the white water in the river, the reflected light in the river. I made this really vibrant green I didn't use thalo 
I use sap green and cerulean blue and a little bit of this Windsor lemon. Makes a nice almost thalo green but not quite as vibrant. And I've got some really warm vibrant colors for the rocks closer to me. I felt like the scene overall was pretty cool and gray. I wanted a little punchiness so I, I created this yellow ochre, cad yellow mix, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson mix. A little warmer. I'll put those in the rocks in the foreground and also a little bit in the fallen logs and the brush on the far river bank just to give the, the painting a little bit of warmth. I may also introduce a little bit of that into the deciduous trees that are climbing along the river bank and up into the, the foothills. Again, just so that the scene isn't quite so so cool and gray. Although one thing I really like about Compton's paintings is how cool and gray they are. He can he can get away with that because the drawing is so good. So it's very graphic, very accurate, not fussy, but just accurate drawing with the brush so he can get away with a really muted palette. So I'll try that today. Here I'm using a small stiff bristle brush and transparent colors to sketch the scene. I use a different color for each area to help me separate them and to play with the composition as I'm doing the sketch. I'm thinking about atmospheric and linear perspective as I'm doing this. So the colors in the far background are bluer, the colors as they come closer are warmer. Ultramarine blue for the sky, adding a little bit of alizarin crimson and burnt sienna to the foothills and the mountains in the background. Burnt sienna for the hills and the trees on the river bank. Alizarin crimson for the river. With the turpentine wash, I use a big brush, it's broken in, it's soft. I'm going for a very dilute mix. Again, I'm using transparent colors, the same colors basically that I used for the sketch. I use those colors to separate the areas and to play further with the values now and the composition. I introduced some burnt umber to darken the nearest trees on the riverbank. Now I take a little sharper, a little smaller evergreen flat and carve into the wash while that paint layer is still a little bit wet. I can wipe away the paint and expose the white of the panel again and expose the, the lightest lights. This is again just an exercise in developing the drawing and the composition. So I wipe away the lights for the snow on the peaks, the rocks on the river banks, some of the tree trunks, and even some of the rocks standing in the river. Alright, there's the turpentine wash in. I stepped back and I can see that this this hill over here, the drawing is a little bit wrong, it's a little too round. So as I paint the sky in, I'll carve into that and make it just a little more angular, correct the drawing a bit. So I'll take a slightly smaller, it's a number two extra long flat evergreen from Rosemary. I'll dip it into a little Gamsol first. It's got a nice sharp edge, beautiful shape. It's actually a brand new brush um, that I can use to paint those whites on, on the snow on the mountain. Beautiful light on the mountain right at the moment, so this is perfect timing. 
So this is a white I mixed up with just a touch of cad yellow and I find it's a good natural snow highlight. If I go pure titanium white, for one, I don't like to use pure white unless I really need it for an accent. And two, it's if I use pure white, it's often a little cool looking, makes it look a little chalky. So by adding a little bit of cad yellow, I keep some warmth and preserve my lightest light white for a, a highlight. While the sun is shining, I'm going to pick out the beautiful highlights. So I'll paint the snow on the mountain first while the sun is shining on it. Pick out the light and shadow pattern. And then I'll paint the blue of the sky and the gray of the clouds. And then go back into that with the mountain rock color. Now as the sun is coming out more and hitting the mountain, I'm getting a little more of a shadow pattern, a little warmer rock color. So I can shift that around a bit by adding more of my lighter values that I mixed up. I'm not going to mix new colors, I'm just going to dip into either pure colors or some of the lighter deciduous tree colors that I have on my palette there and just go by eye, see how it looks on the panel. Now I'll switch to this larger rosemary, it's a number eight, and paint the sky in. I'm thinking about the design here. I think I want to roll some of the cloud over this, this area a little bit, leave this peak, leave that highlight, but roll a little bit through there. And then I want to add the blue of the sky here and here to kind of stand against that snow on the mountain. See how this blue looks against the mountain. A little bit dim, so I'm going to add a little bit of this blue that I mixed for the snow shadow. You can see it's almost the same value, it's just a little cleaner. This same brush that I used to paint the snow on the mountain, I'm going to go in and paint the rock. I'm trying not to chase each and every shape. I'm just trying to suggest a beautiful graphic pattern and shifting the the color uh, temperature mostly warm and cool not much value shift up there very slight I'm also trying to correct the drawing just a little bit as I go yes it's difficult with the Sun coming in and out when it when things shift into shadow it becomes a little closer to the color harmony that was here when I first started when the sun comes out bright and strong, it, it's a different scene. So yeah, that is difficult. It's just, you have to kind of decide to stay with a color harmony, either what was here when you first started or change it up to what you're seeing now that you like better. And I'm staying with what I first saw, but with a little bit more of the warm rock color coming through. I think that's interesting. I'm just doing that by adding some of this higher value, warmer 
color to the colors that I mixed. All right, my camera died there somewhere along the way. I'm not sure why, so you didn't get to see a lot of that. I'll carry on though, because the light is changing. I'm trying to put my mask on the camera to maybe shield it from the sun. Maybe that's what killed it before. Take a soft natural hair brush now and just wipe gently, very softly brush down the edges in the paint that I've put down. I don't want those edges showing, catching glare, and I don't want to I don't want them there if I want to go back and add more detail later to the painting in the studio. I don't want to blend, I just want to knock down some of these edges. I'm going to go in with this same brush I've been using in the Snow on the Mountain and paint the background pine trees. I want to keep them a little grayer than the foreground pine trees, so I'm just adding a little bit of the gray mountain color. This will be the shadow color first. Shadows along the bank of the river. brush and wipe this out. I want to keep the scale of the trees a little shorter in the distance there. This one as well, a little too tall. darker and richer as they get closer. Get the soft natural hair brush and now paint the deciduous trees. Actually, I'm going to use a knife and paint the trunks of the deciduous trees in first. Just use a little bit of this light color from the snow. It's okay if it's just a mix of those colors. I want the sun to be catching a couple of them. Here. As the trunks move into the shadow, they get a little bluer. Be interesting if there was a little yellow. Especially if it's catching some sun. It's a little close to the edge of the panel. I don't know if I like that. I'll let me adjust that later. Thinner ones down here. Not quite as vibrant, but still there.
All right, finally, I'm going to use a large brush and dab in the paint in the water. I'll start by using this same large brush that I used on the sky, and I'll paint in the white water first, and then I'll go into the, the green water. The lights changed so much on the scene now, and I'm getting a lot more reflected light from the mountain, which is really beautiful. Again, keeping perspective in mind, things closer to me will be bigger, so these rapids that are closer to me will be a little larger, and anything further away will be smaller. I can paint in the first stroke, the lighter stroke with this bigger brush, and then go back in with a darker stroke to whittle it down some. Here's where it ended up. I like how it came out. I like that I was able to add some warmth into the grays of the mountain. This is pretty rough. May need to clean it up a little bit in the studio to make sure it reads. It's very soft, but that's okay. I want the center of interest to be up here on the mountain. The river may be a little too vibrant. I may need to tone it down just a bit. But it certainly, when I step back, from it. it certainly gives me the, the feeling of this place. Well, I'll pack up these colors I have left so that I can use them to touch with the painting a little bit later. I'll touch it up in the studio and put it out on my website. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. like to support the channel, please visit my website. I sell these little plain air pieces at a reasonable price because I consider them practice. It really makes me happy when someone likes my art enough that they want to hang it in their home. You can also sign up for my newsletter and stay up to date on my new work, shows, and get a discount on original art prints.